Okay. Okay, good evening. My name is Jeremy Walden. I'm an early college advisor with Madison College and our early college programs. And welcome to the nursing assistant information session for the sp uh, spring of 2022. Uh, these are for students who are looking forward to taking nursing assistant uh, somewhere in the fall of 2022 or spring of 2023. Um, I'm going to quickly, we've got some people from Madison College here with me, and I'm going to have them introduce themselves real quick. Um, and what they do. We will start with um, early college advisors. As I said, my name is Jeremy Walden. I am covering um, the Eastern region and some of Dane County. Um, we have Renuka and Kiana here. Kiana, you wanna go first? Oh, uh, sure. Hi, I'm Kiana. I'm an early college advisor, one of the newest, and I'll be serving the Columbia County area. Renuka? Hi, I'm Renuka Gunawardhan. I'm an early college advisor as well. Um, I'm working with um, Start College Now students as well as the Gateway to College program students. Marie, it looks like Jamal's not here, so it's up to you. Um, I'm Marie Duzio. I am a program chair in the nursing assistant program, so part of my job is to help students navigate our bureaucracies. Um, we also have Jamal Eubanks, who is not with us tonight, and then our manager is Audra Cook, who is also not able, able to be with us tonight. So I just gave you four advisors. So this next screen kind of tells you who is my advisor. So find your high school on here. This is we are signed by high school. So if you see if you're looking for who you might need to contact or be working with in this. Um, in this uh, time, these are who they are said we are really kind of by region so i said i'm e i'm out east in eastern dane county kiana is up north renuka is really out in the western part of dane county and then um, jamal is kind of central metro region of dane county so mmsd milton some prairie area i'll give you just a second to find yourself So tonight we're going to go through a few things. We're going to go kind of through, there's four steps to register for classes, um, nursing assistant class at Madison College. I'm going to walk through each of the four steps. And then um, there is also some expectations that are required for nursing assistant um, that are state regulated and not really non-negotiable and flexible. So I'm going to ask at the end for Marie to hop in and kind of go a little through that as well. So we will start with the first four steps. Um, the first one is the Start College Now application. This needs to be filled out and submitted to your high school. Um, so it does not come directly to us. It comes to somebody at your high school, usually someone in your counseling office. Um, each school kind of has a different person, but check with your counseling office on who it goes to. Um, and it is due to the school by March 1st for the fall. So if you're looking to take classes this fall, you need to have that um, into your high school by March 1st. Not to us, but to your high school by March 1st. Um, this is a state um, regulation. Star College now is a state um, funding source, and this is required by the state statute. So um, if we get applications that are dated after March 1st, we can't actually accept them through the college because of the state legislation. So that just has to go through your school to March 1st, not to us. Um, and for this class, there's only one class you have to put on there. It's this nursing assistant class. There is a class number of 30543-300, and it is three credits. Um, your school um, counselor, uh, school offices often have this application. If you do not have one already, um, contact them and they can get you the application for that. I will also be sending each of our school contacts um, a nursing assistant kind of um, timeline form that they will be getting after today. As part of that timeline, it will be a PDF and it will actually have a link to this video. So you can come back and watch it in case you missed stuff. So that's step one. Step two is creating a Madison College account. So once everything is done, once you have your application in, 
um, you have a few steps you need to take. Um, you will have to create a Madison College account. Um, on the sheet that you will that the schools will get, there will be a um, link to a account creation video. It is step by step video of how to create an account. Um, also, as you'll hear multiple times in this presentation, in any one of these steps, this is where your early college advisors are here to help you with, or someone, or Marie, or someone in school of nursing. We're here to help you through this process. You're not on it your own. So if you're watching the account creation video, you're stuck, you're confused, you know, reach out to us. Um, there's also help desk at our campus if you have questions. All this is on there, um, but you also have when you receive that form from your school with our timeline, it will have your early college advisor's name and all their contact information, email, phone number, um, all that will be on there. Some of us even have a link that you can create. Just click on it and um, register for a virtual meeting with us as well. So all that will be on your school's form. So. The next requirement is our reading requirement. So. Um, nursing assistant requires you to have a certain level of reading um, that they found just to make sure you are successful in the class as well as on the job and the clinical sites so you can read the information that you're needed to while you're there. Um, there are multiple ways to meet this. I put on the four most common ways we use with high school students to get this. Um, most of this we will, as your early college advisors, work with your uh, counseling office or your school contact to try to uh, get these records um, with your Star College Now form. Um, at this point in time, very few people have an ACT test because score because the ACT is on March 8th for all you juniors. And then if you're a sophomore, you won't take it for another year. So because of that, there is also the ACT Aspire score that you uh, took as a freshman or as a sophomore that we can also get from your school. And then some schools are also offering the P, P, pre ACT um, and we can get those. The fourth is this next gen AccuPlacer score. This is a test that you can take through the college. Um, and if this is something where you don't read, read the score or we don't have scores for the others, we will ask you to take through the college. This can be done multiple ways. It's five dollars. It's not, you know, an extremely expensive test. It is untimed. So unlike the ACT, the ACT Aspire, all those tests, this is an untimed test. So uh, most of our students get through in about 30 minutes, but it is untimed. You can take the amount of time you need. So there's not that pre added pressure of making a specific time. Um, and again, this is something you can we would be very probably helpful if you need to do this to work with your early college advisor. We can help you um, get through the different ways to do that. You can come to any one of our six campuses and take them. We do have online testing options as well right now where you can sign up for a virtual testing experience. Um, also, some of our schools actually have, um, we're getting more and more of our schools that have somebody specifically in your high school that can test and proctor the reading portion. So depending on which high school you go will depend on kind of your options there. And now the third part. The third part is the most complicated part. And when I make mistakes this is when Marie will jump in and tell me what I said wrong. Um, but this is you're going to see this is going to be the next like four or five slides. So I'm trying to break it down into um, different sections of the Castle Branch requirements. So what you need to understand about what Castle Branch is, is um, as you'll learn later, there is a clinical part for nursing assistant where you go out and you actually work in a clinical setting with real live patients and with real live staff in a clinical setting. To do that, we need to gather information to send to those clinical sites to make sure you're able to um, meet the qualifications and the requirements that they have for people working with patients. Um, we use a third party vendor who collects all this information. It does not come through us. It is not like checked by us um, unless we have to. Um, and we it's not when I say we it's not us. It's school of nursing. None of us can actually see this. 
um, because it is HIP, most of it is HIPAA protected and we don't want to be in your medical records or anything else like that. So there's a very select few at Madison College who can actually see anything in Castle Branch um, who are all trained in HIPAA protection laws and things like that. So don't worry when you're doing this, it's not coming to any of us. It's, it's, it's really protected in this system. So Castle Branch is a third party um, vendor who collects this all so that then somebody can in our office can or in the nursing office can send it to the sites. Um, the first thing you will do in Castle Branch is you'll go to castlebranch.com and you'll actually have to purchase a package. Um, the package code is MJ17 and is $68. Um, it is subject to change of $68 last time I saw, which was a couple weeks ago. I believe it's still that way. Um, and the, most high schools, this is the one fee that most high schools do not cover. There are some high schools that do, so you would want to double check with your high school if they, if they would cover this or if it's up to you as an individual. But the majority of our high schools do not cover this charge. Um, there's a package code, it's MJ17. Um, you'll know it's the right code because it will say Madison College Nursing Assistant and you'll and it'll, you'll know all that there. Um, again, this will all be on, all this information will be on this document that your schools will receive tomorrow or early Wednesday, depending on when the video can be uploaded and linked to it. Um, there is also an option to purchase an ID card. You do not need to do that. So you will not need to spend any more than the $68. Quite, there will be two or three other times throughout the process. It will offer you something else to do, such as free ex expedited shipping. Um, but you do not need to purchase anything else other than that $68. So, um, all of the documents we'll be talking about have to be uploaded and accepted by Castle Branch before you can register. Um, before you will be. Um, deemed eligible in our system, which is a code in the backside of our system to register, all this will have to be done. Um, the health screen process may take up to three weeks or more. Um, it's actually more depending on some of the vaccines that are required now. Um, so please, this is something you'll want to start as soon as possible to get through to be eligible to register um, for us, which will be May 16th as a or May 11th is the first day that you can do that. Um, so <clears throat> I break this when I talk to students about this, I break this up into two different sections of Castle Branch. One is a background check and the other is health screening. Um, the background check is done throughout the process. You will need a social security number um, to create an account and you will also need it. Um, you might also need it for your um, immunization records. It is six o'clock. You can tell I don't work. I work from seven to four normally. So um, the background information disclosure form. There will be a form linked to the sheet that you get. It is a. Um, it's got a couple of the um, information already pre-filled out for you, but those things are also here, so you don't um, do them wrong. Please. Um, do it honestly, accurately, completely. Answer all the yes, no questions honestly, knowing that if you answer yes, it is not going to automatically disqualify for you from any of the program. You just want to make sure you answer it honestly, and if it, you answer yes and it asks for more information, provide the information that it is requesting you to provide. Um, and as it says here, if you're concerned about anything on that, you can contact uh, Marie, she she can talk you through those and she'll be able to understand. She understands more about what might cause you not to pass the background check or be able to participate in the program. Um, again, that would be just between you and her. So those are a confidential conversation. You'll then want to scan, um, save a, a PDF or take a picture. So you can take a picture of your bid form um, to upload. If you take a picture, you want to make sure that it is on a flat, smooth surface, and it is also flat and smooth, and that you are using a camera that is able, you are able to see all the words and answers on it. Um, the form you'll get from us is a fillable PDF, so you can fill it out right there on the computer. So 
and just save it that way. Now we go to the um, clinical requirements of immunization and other medical records. So the easiest way to find all of this information that you will need for your immunizations is to go to the Wisconsin Immunization Registry or the WIR. This will require your full name, your date of birth, and a social security number. Um, there are a couple other possibilities if you don't have a social security number um, that are on there that you can look as well. Um, but if you have done, now this is a caveat, and I can tell you this because I'm not from the state of Wisconsin, so mine is very incomplete on here because most of mine were done when I was a child in Colorado. If you got most of your immunizations here with the state of Wisconsin, they will be there. If you have not, you might have to go more through your doctor office to get a more complete record and go through my chart. Um, all of these, if you've get, gotten all your series here in the state, will be on it. It's your measles, mumps, and rubella, the MMR, your varicella, which is your chickenpox. Um, this is one that sometimes, occasionally, we have students who have actually did not complete this because they got chickenpox. So there is a different way um, that will be listed on the form you'll receive to uh, prove that you are immune from chickenpox as well. Um, same, technically the same with MMR. That's not very common here in the United States, though. Um, and then the tetanus. I never get these right. Diphtheria and pertussis. I'm a close. There you go. Um, and that's your Tdap. So that is one that has to be done every five years or 10 years, sorry, every 10 years. Um, most of you probably got it renewed when you went into middle school. So um, that's usually when your doctor's office will do it. Um, if you did not, that's kind of the other one that students sometimes have to get if they didn't get that going into middle school. Um, right now, and this is where I might ask Marie to jump in if she has any updated. Right now, um, completed COVID-19 vaccination series is required to enroll. That means your first two doses are required. As of now, we're still not requiring a booster. Correct, Marie? Only um, very few sites are requiring the booster, but we anticipate that that will become the norm Correct. in the near future. But so I've been... Yeah, so as of right now, you will not have to do that to register. However, that could come at any time. We could get something two, uh, three weeks from now. It's an ever changing process. And as soon as we know it's required, we will also let you know that it's required. Um, you know, if you're eligible for it, knowing that it's probably coming down the pipeline, you might want to just go get it done and not have to worry about it either. So, um, and then the last one is the flu shot, and this has to be this year's. And when we're talking about this year's, it'll be next year. So this next fall's flu shot. So this is not something you need to go worry about in, at all right now. So if you did not get the flu shot for this last flu, for this current flu season, we're not looking for that one. We're going to be looking for the one for next fall, which is not available till September 1st. So that will not, you will not do that really until you've started the class. Um, and again, you'll be reminded by this, by your instructors, by our office, um, everyone to kind of make sure, remind you need to get this done as soon as possible once it becomes available. Tuberculosis screening. This is, if you have all the immunizations, especially your COVID, this is the longest part of your process. Um, this is a, for appointment tuberculosis test. So um, if anyone has ever had this done before, it's when you go, it's usually a nurse's appointment at your doctor's office. Um, if you have private insurance, we encourage you to go there. If you have a uh, badger care or something else, please uh, contact our office. We have some other ways you can get this for um, these tests on free or very reduced prices. Um, through um, if you have no insurance or badger care or anything like that. So our office is here to help kind of, and so is the nursing assistant to help you through some of those options. Um, but what they will do is you will go in, they will put a fluid underneath your skin. You will need to go back and have a second appointment 48 to 72 hours later to get it read. They will give you a results of that reading. You want to keep that. You will then do the exact same set test 
at least a week later. So if you went in on Monday, you can't go in until at least the following Monday to do it again. Um, and so you will get that done twice. Um, it is to make sure they are not getting a false negative test result. So that's why they are required you to basically do the test twice. Um, so it's four office visits in total, and it takes about two weeks to get through the, that. Um, then the last two are really simple in Castle Branch. Um, they're just kind of yes, no questions. Um, there's, do you have health insurance? And, um, and asking that you, if you have it to say yes, if you do not, they'll have another set of questions for you to go through. Um, and then there is a functional abilities right in Castle Branch. There is a way to download the functional abilities of what they're asking you to do. And these are simple functions that you need to be able to do while working with patients. It's anywhere from lifting a certain amount of weight to being able to smell different functional abilities that you need to working with patients. Again, it is, have you received this? Will you have, because it's right there to download and can you do it a yes, no question. Um, and I believe in there, it also states that you can do it with certain accommodations if there are certain things that you can't do, correct, Marie? Okay. Again, I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you. Well, you can ask questions at the end. Um, we are here to help you through this entire process. It is not meant to scare you away by any means. It's meant to prepare you better so you're not worrying about it two weeks before you register. Right now you have a bunch of time. We got until May. So we have a bunch of the time to get you through this. So, And then step four is that registration. So you're all done with that. It's all been cleared by Castle Branch. You've been tagged in your system. You're good to go. Um, the School of Nursing will send you an email letting you know you've been approved. We will also know. So we will all, you, you will also get something from one of, from your advisor saying, hey, we know you're now completed. If you want some help um, with the registration process, please set up an appointment with us and we can do that as well. Um, you will enroll through your My Madison College Center, which is where you created that account. Um, we can prepare you to do this even before all this is done by putting your preferred class in a shopping cart and waiting as soon as you're clear to go, you can go in and just click submit and go into that class as long as there's still room in that section. Um, so we are happy to walk you through this while we do the Castle Branch, help you with Castle Branch stuff. If you want to put stuff in your cart, you can set up an appointment with us later. Um, once you know you're ready to register, um, you know, whether it's a phone call, a virtual appointment, or a bunch of us, most of us will be out in schools here and there throughout the spring. So if you want to meet us in person, we can do that as well. So that is the last step. And just as she disappeared from my screen, this is where I was going to pass it over to Marie to talk about kind of what is expected in the nursing assistant classes. Um, and we're going to start with dress code. Uh, the nursing assistant class is basically preparing you to become a healthcare provider. And so our dress code is sort of the conservative version of what employers are looking for in employees. You do not have to wear a specific school uniform, but you will be wearing scrubs. You'll want the least amount of make up the least amount of fingernails the least amount of jewelry possible your shoes are to help protect your feet they're not a fashion statement um, and so everything that you're going to wear is there to protect you or to protect the residents um, to help make sure that you're ready to deliver professional care uh, if anyone has any difficulties meeting the dress code they should reach out to me and we will help you with that we do have a, um, a scrubs bank and other ways to help support students who may find it difficult. If you're especially small or especially large, it's often difficult to find scrubs that fit you comfortably to work in. So please don't hesitate to reach out if you have those conversations with me. They're kept in confidence. Um, is there a next slide? So we will give you a name badge when you're in the program. Some clinical sites will require you to get an additional name badge for their facility. 
If they do, it's usually around $10. We'll let you know at the very beginning if you're going to be in that type of clinical site. And again, you're preparing to be uh, a healthcare provider, so you want to look professional. So you want to make sure your scrubs fit you well, that they cover everything that they should cover, um, and that they don't form an infection control hazard by having the bottom of your uh, pants dragging on the floor and picking up germs, or if you're wearing a long sleeve shirt underneath your scrubs that it doesn't prevent you from washing your hands appropriately. If you have any cultural or religious uh, challenges to meeting the dress code as it's stated, reach out to me, um, the program chair ahead of time. We just work with the clinical sites um, so that everybody knows what's coming and we make sure we're gonna meet their infection control standards. Thanks, Jeremy. I can talk. Yeah. I can kind of talk about this process. So um, textbook and supplies. So we do um, your textbook and supplies are covered by your school districts. So um, we do um, use a lease program or a rental program through the bookstore as far as the textbook. So it will be a textbook you receive through the rental program and it will be have to be returned to the pro to the bookstore um, at the end of your class. The lab kit is something you use and it is not something that gets returned to the bookstore, I believe, because <laughs> um, it's all used up. So um, the lab kit will come, but it is both of these are covered by your high school for this class. The last thing is this optional workbook. Um, this is a um, kind of a preference. It's something that can help you if you want it. Marie, I don't believe, thinks it's something most students use very often, correct? Some students really like a workbook and that will be great for you, but there's no extra credit. There are no assignments. There's nothing that that workbook will do other than help you study more for the class. So right. that's why it's optional. And that would just be one of those things you would want to check with your high school or not if they are going to cover the workbook. Um, some schools do cover workbooks, some do not. <clears throat> The next part is accommodations. So um, if you are somebody who needs accommodations, um, you know, you might have an, a high school IEP, a 504 plan, or even if you just have a medical condition or a mental health condition that you feel like you would need a some type of accommodation to be successful in college, um, please reach out to Disability Resources Services. Um, their information is here. It will be on the sheet you will receive from us. If you are having issues or if you have more questions about that, um, many of us can also help walk you through and help you get connected with the right people at the college to get through this. Just know that by having an IEP or 504 plan yourself at the high school does not meet our college standards. You still have to go through our college process to get our accommodations. It's a um, high school and college accommodations are sometimes different and what we can do and how we implement them. But our our Madison College faculty in general, not just the nursing assistant, but anyone in our college has to use the college accommodations that are approved for by the college. So um, if you need any of that, please again, reach out to DRS directly or reach out to your early college advisor and we will help get you in contact with the right people. Now I'm going to go to kind of just the requirements. So this is, I'll probably hand it back to you, Marie. And I will say when it comes to an accommodation plan, it is never too early to start working with DRS. One of the reasons I say that is in the past, we have had students who are deaf and it takes time for the sign language interpreter to be able to also get through the Castle Branch process to be able to go into the clinical site. So if you have any sort of accommodation need, please start working with DRS as soon as you realize you're going to want to do that. Um, so we have time to put in place those accommodations so you start the class ready to be successful. If you're going to take the state test to be on the registry, which is what we hope you're all planning to do, you cannot use accommodations on that test unless you used accommodations during your training program as well. So um, please consider those things when you think about whether or not you need an accommodation plan. And if you have an IEP or a 504 plan at the high school, 
you should definitely reach out to DRS just to make sure um, whether or not that that would be fair for you. The, the other reason is, it's not too early, just you may remind me of this, is you can sometimes get a talk accommodation on a reading test. So if you need accommodations for our placement testing, you have to get those through DRS before we can you can use them on our placement test. So. Great, thanks. So the class is one three credit class and it has three different components. Theory, which is either done synchronously or asynchronously. So what we call hybrid, where there's some in-person meetings and then there's some work that you do over the internet or face-to-face -face or online live, which is the synchronous version where you're on one side of the screen and your instructor and your classmates are on their own screens, sort of like this meeting is. Um, there's then the SPT supervised practical training in the lab setting and then SPT supervised practical training in a clinical setting. You have to complete all three of those parts of the class successfully to be able to complete the whole class. If you fail one part, you fail all parts. So you need to pass all three parts of the class to be able to get the three credit college class um, successfully on your transcript and to be eligible for test with the DHS. Um, if you have an excused absence, we have to ask the DHS for permission for you to continue in the class and present a makeup plan. You must complete the class as it is scheduled, all of the hours that are scheduled. Um, that's because that's what the legislation at both the federal and the state um, require. So please, if you know that you're gonna miss time, please consider taking the course at a different time. And if an entire high school all knows that oh, we don't have high school on that Thursday, we can't possibly have nursing assistant class, please let me know as soon as your high school knows that so we can change that calendar. Once that calendar is published as the calendar for the class, we have to petition, ask for a waiver from the DHS for you to have permission to continue in the class. If not, you have to either withdraw or you will have failed out. Unexcused absences, you cannot make them up. Um, excused absences include um, acute illnesses, um, either yourself or someone in your family, death of someone in your family, snow or weather days. Right now we're having, um, between tonight and tomorrow morning, we're having a snow or weather day that we're already dealing with. And part of acute illness has to do with COVID as well. If anyone is required to isolate or quarantine for a period of time because of a COVID exposure, even if at the end of that quarantine or isolation, you did not have COVID and you were healthy the whole time, that is considered an excused absence. In the case of some of those COVID isolations or any other diseases, communicable diseases that there's an isolation period, we cannot guarantee that you will necessarily graduate on the day you planned with the group you planned, but we will assure you that we will work with you to put in place a makeup plan so that you can complete the class as quickly as possible. Unexcused absences are things like school trips, social events, performance events, going um, for college visits, parties, um, or being unprepared. So not having uh, homework done before you come to class, that's an unexcused absence. And when you were meeting with your um, early college advisor to pick out classes, you will have the dates of all this all of this information. So you'll know what your dates and times of your clinicals are. You'll know what your dates and times of your labs are. So if you are looking at it and like, you know you have a family trip going during this time and you've got clinicals or you've got lab, then that will not be a section you'll want to choose. You'll want, you'll want to make sure your advisor knows that and it's something you can't move and we'll want to work with you to make sure you can find a section they can or ultimately it might be something where we have to say, okay, maybe it's a better off for you to do the following week. Um, we do, it's not a big deal. Most of you have probably taken the fall, but we do have a different spring break than most of our high schools. So if you're looking at a spring section, that's going to be an issue is you probably have stuff to do on your spring break. Because it'll probably be class then. If you're a cohort, high school cohort, what we try and do is give you off both spring breaks. Um, but you should be, um, you should know that it's not always one high school that's in that class. So sometimes several high schools nearby will also will be in the same class and we can't give you off all four weeks of our spring break and then all three high schools. So sometimes we aim for the middle ground so that your, um, your advisors and your counselors will know 
what um, what those dates are when they're signing you up, other than anything that might have to change if your high school comes forward and lets us know. Um, this is not a self-paced course, but you can work ahead. You can, we always tell you, you can work ahead, but don't fall behind. There are deadlines for everything. You can do pretty much as much of those classes you want as fast as possible. And if you know that you have something coming up, it's a good idea to work ahead so that you can make sure that you have time for those social events as long as they're not planned for the same time you're supposed to be engaging in in-person learning. There are no late assignments accepted. Um, we do allow you one NQA now, no questions asked. So um, that's one thing that we have found is um, will help many more people be successful is one time you can basically you just log into the learning platform and you check the box and you say I, I need to use this and then we give you one week to make up that assignment without academic penalty but only one time and so think of it as no late assignments um, and then you'll have that one grace period there you have to meet all the benchmarks so even though there's no test question that asks were you on time where did you wear your uniform did you treat your classmates and your instructor professionally? You do get a grade for those things. And so you can academically be doing really well in the class, but if behaviorally you're not appropriate to be a healthcare provider, you could then be unsuccessful because there are benchmarks for that as well. Um, and then the grade scale is there. 75% is our minimal passing. There is no D um, in nursing or nursing assistant. Um, as Jeremy said, you're going to need to have internet access even if you're doing a face-to-face -face class. Um, we have Student Technology Help Desk. They can help you with a lot of things. They are not a 24-7 help desk, but your instructors will let you know what to do if you run into some challenges and can't reach them and it's a weekend or an evening and you have assignments due. The theory part, the first part is um, around 50 hours, more than 50 hours of internet um, work. So quizzes, check your understanding quizzes, discussion boards, you don't do all those assignments you when you're in an on live or an online live or face to face class. Um, instead, you do activities that are similar that cover the same content in a different way in that face to face setting. One thing to have that conversation with your early college advisor and your high school counselors is as to what type of learning is best for you. If you know that you do really well learning over the computer, that's one thing. If you know that you don't learn well, you can do much better in a face to face setting, that'd be something else to consider. The lab and the clinical, the lab is on a college campus or your high school may have its own lab or your neighboring, a neighboring high school that you collaborate with will have its own lab. And in there, there will be mannequins and you will also practice on your classmates and on your teacher. The clinical is when you, as Jeremy said, go into a long-term care facility or an acute care facility and take care of real patients or residents where other people are working with them under the supervision of your instructor. You are going to be responsible for protecting their HIPAA rights just as Jeremy is very careful to protect your HIPAA rights in the processes that um, he is facilitating for your enrollment in here. Um, and then I talked about the behavioral expectations, those checklists. There are 41 skills that you will learn um, and demonstrate that you can perform in the class, and then your employability skills, which are all those behavioral things. Are you on time? Are you a good communicator? Are you a good team player? Um, do you follow the dress code? Do you learn from mistakes? Those types of things. And that is it. So now it's time for 